What's good my friends? In this video we are going to talk about how to create these motion graphics with geometry nodes. We will animate the geometry nodes, um, get a camera movement, some depth of field and create these nice looking scenes. So grab yourself a drink, make yourself comfortable. We are going to open up Blender and start with the geometry nodes. Okay, let's go. A uh, brand new file. We are going to delete the light source and the camera. Um, you can select the cube, press tab to get into edit mode, A to select everything and X to delete. So now we got an empty object we can use for our geometry nodes. Okay, I'm heading over to the geometry nodes tab. Uh, we can make some room here. So we are joining these workspaces and let's create a new uh, geometry node. You need to select your cube and press new. Okay, let's select the group input, press X to delete it. We don't need that. Um, Shift A, search for icosphere. Let's drop in an icosphere and plug it into the geometry output. Next thing we need is a merge by distance. Drop this in here. Distance can be 0.16. Now we need a dual mesh, so Shift A, search for dual mesh. Plug this in here. Search for extrude mesh. And now we need a mesh to curve. So search for mesh to curve place it here and plug the extrude mesh in it and now we need a curve to mesh and plug the mesh, mesh to curve into the curve to mesh and we need a join geometry node join geometry place this in the end and join the curve to mesh and the original extrude mesh to the join geometry. Now we can add a curve circle. Curve circle. And add this to the curve to mesh. And profile curve. Let's give it a resolution of 6 and a radius of 0 0.002 and we will add a set material node um, for both of these uh, meshes so search for set material plug one in here duplicate it with shift d and plug this in here okay let's get back to the merge by distance node the second one we created we want to um, plug in some other nodes in there so we search for musgrave texture and plug this into the selection. Now we need a color ramp and a math node. So shift A, search for math. Uh, we need to set this to greater than. Let's make a threshold of 0.6 for now. Now we want to add a texture to the extrude mesh node. So let's make some room here and add a noise texture, shift A, search for noise texture, plug this into the offset scale and let's create a new color ramp to plug this in between. Color ramp and we can change the sliders here a bit. So get this a little bit closer together. You need to play around with that later. Okay, let's change the values from the icosphere. So we're selecting it. Um, the radius can be 0.5 and the subdivisions 5. So as you see, you can play around with this. And you can already tell that you can animate this really well. 
and yeah we leave it at 0.5 and subdivisions to 5 and we can add the values from the musgrave texture too so let's use the 4d and change the w to 9 9.7 the scale to 0.4, detail to 2, dimension to 0, and the uh, last value to 0.8. Now we can also change the values from the noise texture, change the scale to 2, the detail to 0, and later we will animate this value here so let's leave this at zero for now okay this is the geometry node setup um, you can pause here if you like and copy it we are going to use some values from here especially from the noise texture and maybe the musgrave texture um, to animate our geometry node mesh okay we can go back to our layout tab um, let's drag ourselves a new window here we can press t to hide the um, tools let's get into the front view press shift a uh, you need to be in object mode for this so make sure you're in object mode shift a um, create a camera now we can go in the other side view press g and move this camera around um, in this view we are going into the camera view and let's position the camera a bit. So select it, press G, and move it somewhere around here. Let's see how this looks rendered. We need to go to the render tab and change to cycles. And since we are already here, let's change the render output to 300 samples, and the viewport to 30 or something, something low. We can head over to the color management. Let's change the exposure to minus two and to look to medium high contrast. Okay, now we can add a light source. So press shift A, get an area light, press G and Z to move it up. We are heading over to the light source settings and give it a power of 400. And let's move it somewhere so we can see what is happening here okay let's create the environment uh, we are duplicating our layout tab so right click duplicate and change this view to uh, shader editor press n to hide the side menu and we are going into the world settings let's uh, delete this one create an environment texture um, hit Control T on this one to get the uh, mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Plug this into the surface. And now you can um, choose an HDRI. Okay, I uh, imported an HDRI. You can choose whatever you feel like. So we are going to add us a hue and saturation node. So Shift A, click on search and search for hue saturation node. So we are in a quick and easy way to change the whole look and color from the HDRI. Let's bring the saturation to 4 and change it to a color you like. Let's use something like this for now. Okay, I'm heading over to the layout tab again. And as you see, we got two types of meshes we created with the geometry nodes. So we got the basic one with these um, hexagons sticking out and another one that is on the side of, on the edges of, the, of these shapes and we can assign different materials to them. So um, heading to the geometry nodes, select our object, and we can set materials for these in the set material node. So let's create uh, two of these. Uh, we can delete the material that is already on it and create a new one. Let's call this Chrome. We're going to give it a metallic value of 1 and a roughness of 2. And let's see what happens if we apply it to one of these set material nodes. Uh, 
this is the wrong one. We want this on the second one. So we assign the chrome one to the second set material and create a new material. Click on new. Let's call this transparent. And we are going to give it a transmission of one. Let's apply it real quick and the roughness of zero. So transmission to one and roughness to zero. Okay, let's find a good uh, perspective to work with. So you can press N and under view, you got the camera to view. Just uh, enable this. And now you can move around in the scene with your camera. You can press Option, Shift and Z to hide all the grids. We are um, selecting our camera, get into the camera settings. And under viewport display, you can use the passport 2 and give it a value of 1. And now we can move around a bit and find the spot we like. Okay, I'm back in the world settings again. Uh, we need the background node we deleted um, in the beginning again and give it a, a little bit more power, something like 40. We need the background to be really bright. Uh, let's change the colors. I don't like them anymore. So you can just use the hue um, value to get some quick colors. Okay, let's use this one. So I was back in the camera view and changing the perspective a bit to find a cooler angle. So here we got uh, the small ones and some big ones. I think this looks way cooler if we animate this later. Okay, let's make some changes to our transparent material. So I'm heading back to our shader editor, choose object and we are going to select the transparent one and let's add some stuff there okay first thing uh, the roughness can be 0.12 and we need a layer weight node and a color ramp so let's plug the facing into the factor and the color into the emission we can increase the emission to 30 and let's choose 0.2 for the layer weight blend. And now let's drag these uh, color ramp sliders, especially the black one a little bit closer to the white one. And if you change this color, um, you can change the glow of the edges. So let's use something orange in this here. And yeah, we get something like this. We can now start to animate our geometry node mesh and get in some camera motion and a depth of field. Yeah, I'm back in our layout tab. Um, for the depth of field, we are going to use an object we are um, pointing to. So let's add an empty. You can use the plane axis. Let's move it to a place where we want the focus to be. So I think we are using something around here. Let's call it DOF for depth of field. And we can head over to our camera settings and under depth of field, you can use the picker here and choose the depth of field. And let's bring the f-stop down to something like 0.5 and see how this looks. So if you want to see the depth of field in the solid view, you can open up this menu and just activate depth of field. So now you can um, position it a little bit better. And we can also animate uh, the plane axis too to change the focus points. So let's place it somewhere around here. Okay, now we can start to animate the geometry nodes. Okay, let's get back to our geometry nodes. Um, I'm opening up the geometry nodes tab and we can use the distort value from the uh, noise texture to animate our object. OK, 
okay i'm dragging up the timeline a bit uh, let's use value one for uh, the start of the animation so just hover over this value and press i to uh, insert and keyframe you can press um, shift and um, right arrow to get to the last frame of the animation and let's make a really subtle and small movement so in this case uh, 1.5 should be really nice so press hover over this value again and press i uh, now you set a keyframe and as you can see it animates now let's give it some more motion maybe 1.8 and press i again Uh, and to make this even more dynamic, we are going to um, rotate the camera a bit uh, while the geometry nodes are moving. So I'm back into our, our layout tab. Um, I'm choosing the camera. And on this little icon here, you get all the values where the camera is located and the rotation. So in the 3D viewport, you press I um, to set a keyframe for the rotation. And now you press shift and right arrow uh, to get to the end of the animation and now we're going to rotate the camera a bit on the y-axis just a little bit to give it some movement and press i on the value again now you can see we got a really smooth and slow um, animation and yeah, if you like, you can also um, animate the depth of field plane axis. So to do that, you can do the same as we did before. So in the 3D viewport, you can press I and uh, set a keyframe for the location. We get back to the last frame. And with G, I'm moving the depth of field plane axis around. And press I again and set the keyframe for location. So now we got our geometry nodes animated, um, the camera and the depth of field. And uh, you got your animation. Okay, that's it for the tutorial. I hope you like this one. If you do, give it a like. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want to see more geometry node stuff, I got a playlist with a couple of videos. Make sure to check this out. And yeah, have a nice day. Hopefully see you in the next one. Peace.